Hi, question from Tess. Tess says, where's the question? I have a question about fear of weight gain, sort of. I'm still at the beginning of my weight restoration journey and have recently been able to accept that changes to my body and the temporary personal discomfort that may bring me as a necessary in-between phase to getting back to me. However, I'm actively dreading the judgment or even non-judgment questions that my physical changes will bring up with those around me, especially my uni community who I won't be seeing for the upcoming summer months as everyone is traveling back home. I know that people won't actually care, but I am already uncomfortable with the curiosity that will arise with everyone who's always been contemplating my healthy lifestyle and now question why I would have suddenly let myself go, that's in inverted commas, or change such an integral part of my identity, that's in inverted commas, which I know it's actually not, that's in brackets. Part of me wants to do some extreme action such as organising a huge awareness charity family as an excuse to exhibit the reason behind my changes as being recovery from an eating disorder, but I don't know if it's as actually healthier than just facing the problem dealing with it. Do you have any advice or expertise dealing with other expectations? It's a, um, you know, it's that kind of thing that I feel like a lot of people would be like, just don't worry about it. But at the same time, you can't expect people not to notice, can you? Now, here's how I sort of dealt with that. And also, before I talk about that, I will say some people do actually the sort of thing that you're alluding to there, where they will suddenly sort of jump out and be like, eating disorder awareness everybody this used to be my problem they'll publish a big long blog on it or a youtube thing or do some event and use it as not only um an excuse for bringing more awareness and saying hey but also just really for explaining just in one big go to say hey everybody i wasn't well before and now i'm doing better and this is positive so if that's what you feel you want to do, do it. But it has to be because that's what you feel that you want to do. Um, and, you know, that's a very public way of doing things. And it really just depends on you, doesn't it? Because some people like doing things in a big public way and some people don't. Um, the way that I thought about it, because anybody that's just like, oh, just don't worry, no one will notice. Well, oh, of course people will notice. Like, if you go from looking one way to looking another way, they're going to notice, but here's the important part. Just because people notice doesn't mean that they necessarily notice and think it's a bad thing or notice and then judge you negatively or do anything actually other than notice and go, oh, that's a difference. And I think you will be surprised at the amount of people who notice and they think, oh, gosh, she looks, looks a lot better. And then before you know it, being their brain has gone somewhere else and that's as much attention as they gave it. Now, in our own heads, and this is this annoying thing that our brains do, is anything that we're insecure about, our brain bangs on about it. And then because you can't, you know, it's difficult to imagine being in someone else's brain. So because your brain's banging on about, about something, you think that everybody else is thinking about nothing but that. You all know, well, most of you probably know, I'm sure anyone who had acne as a teenager knows the feeling of when you've got a big spot on your forehead, this big red mark, and you feel very, very insecure about it, and you have to go to a party, and you spend the entire time thinking that everybody in the room is thinking about nothing other than the spot that's on your forehead. Because you're thinking about nothing other than the spot that's on your forehead. But the reality is, is that every other person in that room is thinking about their own shit, and you will go through a lot. You're doing recovery, it looks like, this summer. And you're going to go through a lot of shit this summer. And hopefully you're going to come out really proud of yourself and feeling a lot better. But that's your shit. And everybody else is off doing some, something else. But they're all going through their own shit as well. And they're going to all come back to university with their own insecurities. And they're all going to think that all anybody's thinking about is what's happened with them. And that's the thing that's so ironic about it, is everybody's walking around thinking about everyone's noticing me but nobody is because they're just all so worried about themselves <laughs> so whilst what's going on with you might seem like this mammoth thing that of course nobody could notice it and think about it a lot I'm not saying that people won't notice it but I am saying you'd be surprised at how little they actually think about it um, and so just keep that in mind and I think that the just what I did with it 
mostly I had that in mind. I was like, nobody's really paying that much attention to me. I think I was probably right there. But the other thing was, and the other thing that I really kept in my mind, and it was easier for me because I disliked my thin body so much. It was easier for me to be like, I can't look anything other than better than I did before. So, <laughs> and the, the again, the sad thing, though, about this is that people that, um, have, that like their thin bodies don't sort of see that other people don't like their thin bodies. And so whilst you maybe mourning your thin body and coming to terms with it and working on all that mentally, but deep down you still don't really like the healthy body that you're in yet. Everybody else is looking at that body and saying, oh, thank fuck, she looks so much better. (laughs) And so that's what you have to keep in mind as well if you don't like your healthy body yet, because you will, you'll learn to. But if you don't like your healthy body yet, just remember that it's likely that everybody else is going to be like, she looks so much. Um, and so that certainly helped me just, just knowing all of those things. And I was also surprised at how people that did mention it, I was just honest with, they're like, Oh God, you look, you look better. You look so much better. I'd be like, yeah, I just recovered from an eating disorder. I've had that the whole time you've known me. And I'd just be quite lighthearted and open about it. And then they'd be like, okay, well, that's interesting. Good. Good for you. Okay. Yeah. And then anyway, so we're going to that, you know, conversation goes on. So I was pleasantly surprised with how uninterested most people were, honestly. Because everybody at your age has got their own other things to worry about. There's so much to worry about when you're late teens. It's just so much stuff. Hopefully, after, after a while, an eating disorder will not be one of the things that you have to worry about. It will do, but there'll be other things, I promise you that. But it will be nice to worry about other things and not have to worry about your eating disorder. So... Go back with confidence. Go back knowing that despite what your brain tells you about your body, as far as everybody else is concerned, you will look like a happier, healthier person. And people like happier, healthier people. And so enjoy that. All right, I'll go. Bye.